Meet Sarah, a six-year-old girl who is preparing to commence her first formal year of schooling in Darwin. Last year, Sarah attended Waddle Gum Early Learning Centre, where she managed to form some great friendships and enjoyed being immersed in the ELC environment. Early into her year, Sarah was diagnosed with communication, attention, social interaction and self-regulation difficulties. This behaviour indicated the potential to be formally diagnosed as autism or ADHD. Sarah's parents were very impressed with their experience and the professionalism and support exhibited by the ELC and the educators during Sarah's transition year and as a result wanted to enrol Sarah into their feeder school, Waddle Gum Primary School. The school was conveniently located walking distance from their home and many of Sarah's friends were also going to be attending. This excited Sarah and made her also feel comfortable with their initial decision. But unfortunately, after the formal interview process, the principal informed Sarah and her parents that the school could not provide adequate support for Sarah regarding additional assistance and needs and strongly suggested that she be enrolled in a specialist or different school. This process left both Sarah and her parents discouraged and disheartened. They felt there was poor communication between the ELC and primary school and they knew that trying to pursue enrolment would be made difficult. As a result, Sarah's parents decided to enrol her at a government school. The school was an hour's drive from their home and would be a completely foreign environment for Sarah. Because of this, she felt isolated and rejected. Sarah's attitude towards school began to deteriorate rapidly, along with her mental health. Unfortunately, Sarah and her family scenario isn't uncommon. Many families continue with the struggle of successfully enrolling their child with disabilities into their school of choice on a full-time basis. When a child is diagnosed with an intellectual disability, parents often report that they felt strongly pressured to enrol them in a special school or a support class. Lack of resources in regular classes often motivates this choice, as do dominant ideologies of responsible parenting and disability, making the decision to enrol a child in a segregated setting seem both more caring and selfless. This common exclusive practice is also known as gatekeeping. Additionally, even if students make it through the gate, they are often not included or face micro-exclusion and therefore do not feel welcome or have access to genuine participation and opportunities to be valued and recognised. The Northern Territory also recently faced budget cuts, with funding reduced to a minimal $4,553 per student. This reduces access to vital resources including ISA and other staff that could assist in facilitating an inclusive environment for children like Sarah. The enrolment of a child with a disability requires considerable effort, particularly for the homeroom teacher, while principals and other educators often worry that they lack competency or the physical resources needed within the classroom to include students with additional needs. Students and families express considerable distress and negative psychosocial impacts because of their exclusionary experiences and despite the policy and mantra encouraging parent choice, they can be left feeling like they have no other option but to enrol their student in segregated schooling. So, how do Australian families of children with disabilities practice their right to enrol their child in the school of their choice? In an ideal world, students with additional needs have equal opportunities to their peers, including access to the same educational settings. Further to this, the ideal world of education includes fair enrolment processes, nationwide policies that incorporate proactive measures of inclusive education environments in terms of funding, communication and student support. The Disability Standards for Education states that students with disabilities are entitled to enrol in schools on the same basis as students without disabilities and schools are required to make reasonable adjustments to accommodate the student's needs. Studies have also shown that support staff play a vital role in increased academic performance and overall well-being among students. It is certain that when measures are in place to keep vital resources such as funding and support staff, it will lead to an increase in morale within the wider school community. Sarah and her family should have the opportunity to enrol her in whichever school they feel will best encourage educational growth and inclusion. Families should ensure that their concerns are heard and that their children's needs are met. Additionally, it is recommended to address a complaint if the parents feel the school has breached the disability standards for education policy. 
The enrolment process requires communication and assistance from a multidisciplinary team of family, school and health professionals. All members of a child's team bring a unique set of knowledge, skills and experience required to action support inclusion and minimise exclusion. While policy and discourse are not enough to ensure inclusion, it is important the school incorporates a positive, equitable approach to Sarah's learning and encourage and challenge her learning like they would any other student, ensuring prior assumptions are not made and inclusion is maximised.